this. What's up, everybody? I apologize for being MIA. Trying my best. Trying my best. How we doing? It's a war outside, man. Tried to tell y'all it's a war. It's a war, literally. literally. I don't want to talk about that war, though. I don't want to talk about what's going on in Israel. And <clears throat> yeah, for all we know, this could be the beginning of the end. <laughs> <laughs> feels like feels like there's just always something going on over in that part of the world and for whatever reason uh we seem to be fascinated by it and just feel the urge to be right in the middle of it <laughs> yeah now nah, america makes no sense man no sense and i don't know enough there's probably some big conspiracy we can kick off later on down the line but nah <laughs> like uh, you know what? I will say this, though. Like, Joe Biden, <laughs> didn't he come out? I feel like two weeks ago, he came out and was like, hey, Israel, like, w watch, like, slow down. Slow down. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, like, all this stuff that you're doing, this ain't cool, that ain't cool. And then out of nowhere, he was like, what'd he call it? He was like, <laughs> the, the uh, we have... They have our support like ironclad or some bolt. He had some term he kicked out there and he was like, we got their back 100 percent. It's like, bro, they literally just did what you told them not to do and slow down or whatever. And now we have to have their back. I don't I don't know. It just it never adds up. And it takes like 10 years for us to really get the truth in these Middle East situations. So fuck them. Not anybody in particular. Just fuck the whole topic. Throw it all. Yeah. Get rid of it. Uh, let's talk about something more uh, positive, like <clears throat> my espresso maker. If you don't have an espresso maker, man, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Real shit. I, like, if you're a coffee drinker and you don't have an espresso maker, I don't know what's going on, man. Can't trust you in life. I swear to God, it's been the best, best thing that I have ever done. Or I didn't do it. I got it bought for me, but same shit. Best thing that's ever come into this house. It's not even close, man. It's not even close. I'd rather give you my bitch than give you my espresso maker, man. For real. It's the gift that really does keep giving. It <clears throat> Name something in your house that when you wake up, it's just the first thing you think of. Do you have that in your house? If you don't, get the fucking espresso maker, man. It just makes life worth living. It really does. Get the one I got, the uh, the automatic one. All you got to do is like press two buttons. Yeah, and you're fucking golden, man. Every morning. Every morning. <clears throat> but you know what, though? <laughs> I got a little greedy. So um, when I first got it, I'm, <laughs> dude, I'm such a dude. Uh... I started tweaking on everything and I was like, let me buy all these different coffee beans and let me try this, like the, the expensive shit. Like we want to know what the, we want to, we want to have a spectrum. You know what I'm saying? We want to know what money could buy. Right. So, um, I'm watching all these, how to make a latte the right way. And since I got the fucking machine, I might as well, I might as well like, listen, sorry. Um, I had somebody over. I had some. You dudes better step your game up, man. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> tell you right now, man, because I'm heating up the competition, yo. Real shit. I had somebody over. <laughs> and uh, we woke up in the morning, and I'm like, dude, I could make you. Uh, like, do you want like a latte? Do you want whatever? Man, she thought I was going to order that shit. I felt like the man when I was like, nah, man. Just be in the kitchen for like two minutes. And when I came back with it in the proper cup, <laughs> oh my goodness, wait till I get downstairs fixed. You dudes are in trouble. Like, what are you going to do, bro? <laughs> it's early in the morning. Let me just get this off, man. <laughs> oh, man. I got a sauna. We got a Peloton bike. I got free weights for you, bitch. I got a little outdoors area. She wants to like kind of like catch her breath a little bit, you know? <laughs> I got a fucking espresso maker, man. You know what I'm about to get though? And you guys are really gonna be in trouble with this. Um, there's a 
there's a massage machine and it's it's not one of them little sit on the chair thing nah it's a bed i'm going to i'm going to show you guys when i get this shit i'm sold it's a bed that uh just lays flat like it looks like a lower like massage bed like literally like a little bed but it folds up by itself and it takes about like 4 to 5 feet i don't even think 5 feet like 4 feet it can just compile itself into a box and then when you're ready to use it you just click a button and just goes so it doesn't even take up that much space and this fucking thing gives you like the best massage that a machine can do literally people buy them they have a few out here and i guess this is popular in like tokyo or whatever like i said i'm sold um they buy these machines and then they put like a whole bunch of mini private rooms and they sell it out for like introverts to get a massage Anyway, this thing's like five or six grand, but uh, I've heard it's life changing and my back has been fucked for a decade. So once I get that, it's over, bro. It's over. Wake your girl up to some espresso. Be like, yo, baby, go get your little workout downstairs and shit like that. Then hit the sauna and massage. Man, it's over with, bro. Over with. <clears throat> Stay savage. <laughs> oh, shit. Nah, I look, I... I pop a lot of shit, but um, that espresso maker, I promise you, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel right if I didn't share the good news, the gospel of the espresso maker, man. <laughs> There's a few things in life that give you this feeling. I'm saying like, I have, I've spent a lot of money on shit and it just never, after like a week, I've had this motherfucker for like a month and a half, two months now. You know what I'm saying? I'm still raving about it. Love that fucking thing. Anyway, let's get to the rap beef, man. I'm actually excited for this. No lie. No lie. Like, it actually is pretty cool. Uh, we got, um, dude, can we talk about J. Cole? <laughs> what a what a let down for his fans. I've never been a J. Cole fan. Um, not saying he don't go crazy. He definitely does. But um, yeah, just his um, his style just ain't for me. I feel like... I feel like he took the route of like the enlightened, like he's the motherfucker that you go over to his house and he's like brewing a special herbal tea or something. He's just not my type of dude, man. <laughs> like, I feel like, I feel like there's something about those dudes that in their head, they feel like they're just more like enlightened or something like that. There's some, and they all dress the same. You know, and it doesn't matter, white or black, they still want to grow dreadlocks. Like, I know this type of person. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 I don't even need to be around him to, to know what it's like to be around him. Do you know what I'm saying? So, dude, dude, like, like I've always said, different strokes for different folks, man. Pause. But um, uh, that's just not, that's not me. That's not me, man. Like, and this just validates that the fact that he was like you know my conscience just couldn't take it you know what i'm saying i just felt a crazy energy in the last few days <laughs> yeah you felt your ass getting handed to you that's what you felt <laughs> that that's what happened that's how big he felt you know what i'm saying when hit him up drop you know what i'm saying like it's supposed to feel that way he's like this crazy energy yeah <laughs> yeah nah that's it that's it <laughs> If this was in a dictionary somewhere, like, how am I going to feel after a rap disc where I get my ass handed to me? You're going to feel crazy energy. <laughs> You're going to feel depressed. You're going to feel all that shit. Nah, bro, you right on schedule, bro. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, could you imagine that? Because y'all don't got to know what this shit is like. I've never been dissed. Nobody's ever dissed me or anything like that. I don't think I'm big. I'm not worthy of a diss. Well, I wouldn't say worthy. I'm not a rapper. You'd be wasting your time. But uh, but I could put myself in their shoes though. Like I could, I could see it on a lower level. Waking up and just being like, "Dude, they dropped a diss on me," and then you play it and it's fire. Oh, that's got to be a crazy morning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because when that shit really go hard, you just want to kind of bob your head. But like, if it's your own diss, you know you can't do that. So, nah, yeah, I bet that shit is crazy. And on top of that, if we really got down to the nitty gritty. Uh, J. Cole versus Kendrick lyrically, because they're both kind of not really. 
I'd go with Kendrick just because it's the West Coast, but um, they're both not really my my style, you know. As far out of everybody, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm kind of like jumping ahead, but the beef right now is I'm actually kind of confused by the beef. So was it was it Drake and J Cole against Kendrick and Rick Ross? Why is Rick Ross in it? Um, yeah, because and then and then J Cole like because I'm reading all the memes and I'm trying to you know I try to get information for this podcast so I watch other other YouTubers and things like that and it was like J Cole left Drake hanging and he like Drake had to fend off everybody that's kind of like the joke that was going on but I'm not gonna lie to you. God damn, boy, Drake actually earned a lot of my respect. Drake is clutch as fuck, bro. Y'all don't get it. Y'all don't get it because nowadays everything is so quick. When somebody drops a diss, like they disrespect you in rap, you're expected to respond in like 24 hours. Do you know how crazy that is? Because not, not even just writing the rap, just to get it mixed and mastered and put on to the fucking platforms dude you have like a four hour window <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i wonder what the house is like after like yo you got this it's like yo everybody get to your battle stations like dude it's like that i'm trying to tell you i, I i've been taking um like classes to learn how to mix and master and all that type of shit man that yeah i mean it obviously it's possible but like i said you can't fuck around you got to get to it right when it drops like yo let's go you got to be in the booth right when it drops man and he did, but he did his thing on it. Like, I actually feel like that's the best Drake that I've heard in a long time. Uh, um, yeah, nah, 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 he went crazy. But you know who else went crazy and I was super surprised by it? Rick Ross. Rick Ross went crazy on his shit, in my opinion. And I like the angle he took. Because he was like, bro, we knew you from way back. Not to even, this isn't even on, I'm just having some fun with it. This isn't like, I know Rick Ross isn't like the most thorough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The CEO and shit like that, I know. But um, his angle that he took as far as like, we we knew you when you was like on nerd type of time. Because we all know that. We all know who Drake is underneath it all. You know? And I think that, um, I think that day and age has definitely died where they people care about that now it's just if you got the fame bro and you could push numbers and you can get people to react to anything clout um that's that's the bottom line right there but i still appreciate the angle and i think a lot of the older rap fans who kind of came up in that era they respect that angle too for this and i think it was i think he killed it what'd he say um what did he say? Who believes he moving keys in his Louis V's? <laughs> nah, that's 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 hard. <laughs> that's hard. Oh man. One of the things that he said too that I was like, I don't know about that. He was like, I got more money than you. I was like, Rick Ross got more money than Drake. <laughs> you know, you risked the whole disc with that, the whole disc with that one, boy. Once they once they find out one thing is cap, bro. This, this this day and age is ruthless, man. Ruthless. They want they want you to have receipts for everything. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like uh yeah, that whole J. Cole thing is such a letdown because as this <laughs> Yeah, nah, that's a you know what though? That's what you motherfuckers get. You know, backing up these like being a super fan and shit like that of J. Cole's and shit. That's what you get. Bro, like your bro wasn't built for that. Go brew the herbal tea and just chill out. Do like a festival or something like that, man. Do some spoken word shit. I feel like he should go on tour with like Common. <laughs> oh my goodness. Just it just yeah. <clears throat> y'all know who I'm talking about too. Don't act like y'all don't know. We all we all have like one person that kind of went that route. It's kind of like that, like it's the pothead that just let it get to his head. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like after that one weed session, he was like enlightened for life. <laughs> oh man. 
so yeah, Kendrick, I feel like his initial diss definitely put everybody on like warning. But I think now he has to come back with <clears throat> with something else where he just kind of blitz him. Now it's out. Everybody is everybody's involved now. Um Yeah, so yeah, Rick Ross is the one that's confusing me though. So Rick Ross is going directly at now nah, his shit is funny though. Yeah, especially at the end of his song, he's like, white boy. <laughs> he's like, we know you, white boy. What did he say? Another white boy wanna hang out in the park with the crew or something like that. Oh my goodness. Um I mean, I feel him though. Like, could you imagine like like <laughs> Being being around Drake in the beginning, because Drake was like, square isn't even the word. Square isn't even the word, man. This is like a fucking movie. Like for Drake to actually become uh, who he is today is like what movies are made out of. Like the dorky kid that got like beat up in high school and, <clears throat> you know, grows up to be <laughs> the baddest motherfucker around in this uh celebrity department uh, he's fucked some of the baddest bitches and and dude has more money than he knows what to do with uh he's killing it but could you imagine being around him and being like this dude's a dork this dude's a this and that and now you're like fucking i he has every girl i want you can't hate on success man you really can't um yeah it doesn't matter how they get it there's a certain respect you know but let's be honest like when it comes to men and how they carry themselves, the opinion of another man doesn't fucking matter if you don't carry yourself like a real one. You know, if you're selling out and you're doing a whole bunch of things for things that other men don't respect as well, who gives a fuck? And there's just not too many people that haven't sold out to uh, the clout. You know, so it's just a bunch of like, it's just a fucking feeding frenzy. You know, but like I said, I feel like there's still some some real ones out there that <clears throat> I don't think Drake gives a fuck about that, though. I don't think he ever did. I think he like manipulated the game because I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of the street dudes, they're easy to manipulate, especially if you find one that like wants that easy, that free ride. Like if you find a, the, the, the weak link in the chain, like street dudes are some of the easiest people to manipulate. And I feel like he did some of that. Like, cause he, he found something that they needed. Those hooks in the beginning when Drake was like lacing every fucking hook and it started going into that like backpack rapper, hipster type of shit. He had the juice, he had the clout. And if the street dudes bend, then they lose forever. If the street dude, because the street dudes at one time, they were the gatekeepers, you know, like especially in rap. Um, if they would have held the line, <laughs> then they would have been OK. But once one breaks, it's over. Yeah, you know I'm saying like, yeah, it's done. I've said this before, like, who are you going to what character would you rather have? Uh, do the Super Bowl. Or some sort of big, huge event. Like, host the Oscars. Would you rather have Drake or DMX? You're going to be like, dude, Drake, he's safer. He appeals to more. There's less complications. He's joking around with people. He's like, DMX going to come in there and put everybody on edge. You know what I'm saying? RIP the dog. But it's like, yeah, like, who would you rather have? Like, a g Easy or, like, me? <laughs> They're going to be like, dude, give us g Easy. <laughs> or, like... You know what I'm saying? That 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 person who dedicated majority of his life to the entertainment side, not the criminal side, not the gangster side, not all that. Like the person who's, what do they call that? Uh, like media trained. You know what I'm saying? I feel like Drake is like the monster, like the fucking, like <laughs> the rapper's version of uh, like Flubber. <laughs> Like somebody made him in like a shed or something like that. He's built for this shit, man. I'm not going to lie to you. Like you got to give him his credit. It's early in the morning, y'all. <laughs> my brain isn't awake yet. In like two hours, I'll I'll probably change my mind on this. But uh, yeah, like I was I was surprised, man. I was surprised. I was like, damn, dude, he, ha he has a lot of pressure on him. Like one, if he would have dropped some shit that was just whack, like everybody knew it was just garbage. Like it wasn't even entertained. 
this could have really hurt. You know, but the fact that it's hanging in there, a lot of people think it's trash, but th that's going to happen with anything. You know what I'm saying? Even when back to back drop, like it was in every club and every bar, wherever, in everybody's car at the time. But there was a group of people that was like, this shit's whack. Yeah, but if it hangs up there like that and there's a group of people and they jacking it. And like I said, they playing that shit at venues and whatnot. Nah, bro. You did your thing. Win, lose or draw. Like now it's all technicality. Now it's like everybody has their own taste. You know, like, but as far as like the diss records, ah, this is a tough one. If I, if I had the, J. Cole is, was the wackest. Let's keep it all the way fucking real. And he just made it even more whack. Yeah. He just didn't belong in this shit, man. Yeah. Just go. Yeah. Go brew it. Uh, light some incense or something like that, bro. Just sit back. <laughs> the, thing, the thing that's so crazy too, is like, there was zero chance of violence in this rap beef. There was not, there was no chance that this went left. Like, what would that look like? Like Drake, Rick Ross, Kendrick, and J. Cole. Like, uh, here's another thing, J. Cole. How you finna start it with a uh, first person shooter? Like I said, I never really digged his style of music anyway, but how are you gonna start it and then be like, it was too much? <laughs> Beta male. <laughs> no, that shit, that shit gets me every time The energy for the last two days was crazy <laughs> J. Cole fall on out of here, bro <laughs> Could you imagine that, bro? Somebody calling him up like, hey, yo, bro How you feeling, bro? You, you know I'm nah, bro, the energy my body just ain't <laughs> Get your ass out of here, bro What happened? <laughs> oh my god uh, and then he took it off the platform like ah uh, he gonna live to regret that because man you just took the fun out of this shit bro see what i'm saying it's, it's motherfuckers like that it's always the ones with the fucking faded oversized t-shirt with the fucking dreads that don't make any sense always fucking everything up bro like this is hip hop. It's a part. It's it's a part of hip hop. Like it, it, you're gonna be okay, bro. You know what I'm saying? This is a fundamental, <laughs> foundational block in the hip hop culture, bro. And you're just <laughs> losing your shit behind it. Like it's just a battle, bro. <laughs> and like I said, you started it. Now it's like I'm too good. Like I'm just. <laughs> I swear to God, man, they all, they're all the same. Those type of people, I feel like they dress in that way that's like, I don't conform to anything, but they really fuck everything up at the same time. Like, bro, this could have just been fun. It's just for entertainment, bro. We need this right now, bro. There's a whole war going on in the Middle East. You had to make it about you? Fucking narcissist. Like, and I, and I know what everybody's thinking. Like, well, he's just being like, fuck all that. I don't even want to say all that soft ass shit. It's just hip hop, bro. And like... Your op, if we could even call him that, is Drake, bro. Drake and Kendrick Lamar. You're going to be all right, bro. You're going to be fine. Could you imagine how he how he would feel if he, if he like, dissed a real one? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like even if you diss, like, like, 50 Cent or something like that. 50 Cent, like, yeah, if he sees you in person, he'll probably press you. But he is going to fucking maul you online. I could even see that. Like, yeah, the energy was crazy. But Kendrick? <laughs> oh man Ah uh, shit <laughs> Yeah I don't know it did, Man does anybody feel me on that though Those people that it's like Man we just want to enjoy ourselves Like Everybody's having fun and it's that fucking Extra woked out person That's like yeah no nah, Like I don't think we should be doing this Like do you guys know the real roots Of this like shut the fuck up <laughs> Damn bro Fuck, we got a lot of shit going on, bro. Whew. All right, if I had to pick, though, between the two disses, uh, Drake and Rick Ross, ooh, man, that's tough, because I'm not going to lie to you, man. I actually like, I actually really like Rick Ross's diss. <laughs> he, like, low-key snapped. I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold you, man. Like, when I heard, because I heard it live, or I don't know if I heard it live, but I heard it on a live. I was watching um, Academics live. And he was like, oh, Rick Ross responded. I heard Rick Ross responded in like four hours. 
Bro, so he's clutch as fuck too. Man, oh man. Dude, he must have he must have just knew. Like, nah, this shit coming. He had to have because man, nah, that again, I think that was like the best Ross that I heard in a minute. Like, ah, if I had to pick. Mm, there Drake has that club value. He always brings that. Sorry, that like party thing. Um I think I'm going ah, damn. Uh, I think overall if I take that into consideration, I'm going to go with Drake. Oh man, but I'm tra- I'm telling you, I I this is just me personally. Like I said, I'm not really considering as a diss record though, for a diss record though. Rick Ross. I can't believe I'm saying that, man. <laughs> can't believe I'm saying that. But I feel like this was uh besides little buzzkill over there trying to rain on the parade, I feel like this is a very good thing for hip hop. There's no chance of any violence. This is just like, yo, let's just see where your pin game is I feel like this is this should this should be something we do every year. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you want like that top status and shit like that. Man, we grew up on this shit, bro. Like like I grew up in the um the 50 cent jaw rule. Like I feel like I feel like there was always a beef going on and it just gives that like extra it just like get it just makes it more fun, more interesting, and it just keeps people on their game. I feel like uh Yeah, I feel like it's boring without that. I think rappers should wake up being like, man, I could wake up tomorrow and somebody will try to get at me. I think some of the gangster stuff, uh all the extracurricular activity kind of fucks with that a little bit. Um <clears throat> again, that'll take the fun right out of it too, because at the end of the day. Um. Yeah, that element, that element to it, you know, is. Yeah, as far as all the street shit goes, I just feel like it's way too incorporated into hip hop at this point. But it's it, none of it's like high level shit. Like when I say high level, I mean they're gang bangers. Like don't get it fucked up. They're gang bangers. Um, but. It just has that type of this is going to end bad type of feel. And it's like, I don't feel like the fans really like them to, for who they are. I think they're just literally used as like, yeah, this is just entertainment because I get caught in that. Like, I'll be trying to keep up with what's going on, especially for this podcast. And I'm like, oh, little this, this, little that. And I never even heard of them, but I'm like, oh, I wonder what happened with that. But if they die, I don't give a fuck. That's kind of, you know, that's kind of sad. I don't think it should be like that. But there's a million of them doing that because they know the blog sites and the podcast sites, those are kind of like the gatekeepers. That's the game that they have to play. They have to push these headlines. And um, yeah, so what's an easier way to do that than to start beefing with somebody and incorporate a lot of the gang stuff? Because people tweak on that shit, man. I've always been amazed by that. Like, uh people really do uh become fanatics for the uh criminal underworld you know like there's a lot of people that those people kind of creep me out to be real with you um the journalists and all that like the uh, like the people that just be on one subject and it's like dude this is just you're just flirting with the line of like that stalker type of feel you know, I don't know if I could do something where it was just like obsessing over one person or one group of people. I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, I couldn't do that. But they're out there. They're out there. <laughs> OJ Simpson died. Fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> that's got to be one of the craziest things that's ever happened in America. You know, and it's all, I understand why I, I totally get like the race thing that was happening at the time, but nah, dude killed a woman. She didn't deserve that. Fuck him. Everybody knows he did that shit too. I don't want to hear it. Y'all better not come at me with any type of, uh, <clears throat> nah, hell no, nah. man. He killed one of our white Queens. <laughs> I'm fucking with y'all. 
<laughs> Fuck it with y'all. But, uh, nah, man, nah. Nah, I, everything gets turned into race and all that. At the end of the day, a piece of shit is a piece of shit. I don't care what color it is. <clears throat> nah, that shit's sad, man. Did y'all see the uh, the series they did on that, the show, with uh, Cuban Gooding Jr.? That shit was fire. Like, that shit was fire. But at the same time, it's like, bro, who else could have, like, it's, it, it's obvious, bro. So many times you was already involved in domestic disputes with this lady. And I, I don't give a fuck. Are you going to talk about this shit when he did? What else we finna talk about? How much yards he ran for, bro? He fucking threw that out the window when he killed the bitch, like, you know? Yeah, that's sick. And everybody know, everybody knows, man. It's just he had that, uh, and a lot of people do put put it on to the race thing, but nah, his his legal team was fire. They were fire. A lot of them dudes were making mistakes. Uh, I think sometimes, nah, I don't think I know the DAs and the prosecutors, man. They be getting too wide eyed with shit, and they just just go too far, and then they end up allowing the defense to. Uh, Start poking holes through their game. Like they sometimes they try too hard, man. And when you do shit like that, you, you yeah, you leave little cracks. Yeah, we're not gonna be politically correct on this podcast. Fuck, bro. Mm hmm. Um, oh, yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Let me tell y'all this. So I've gotten a bunch of, um, messages about relationships that's like the number one thing that i get you know is uh girls message me questions about men men hit me with stuff about females and i thought about this some people will send me like situations that's going on by the way we got our first girl since i don't know i don't even want to call this season two since we have brought this podcast back this is the first female that has asked for genuine advice, or maybe not advice, just my opinion. And I was actually blown away by it, man. <laughs> what a trailblazer, yo. Real shit. Because I swear to God, girls literally just message me all the time and tell me what I should be thinking or like what I'm doing wrong. Like females are crazy, man. But this is the first one that was like, I genuinely want to know. So we'll get to that. But, uh, but I get a lot of messages where people are telling me about their relationships. And I'm like, I have a lot that I could relate to, but I feel like a lot, I feel like people need to really do their homework on narcissism. I really do. Like ever since my eyes have been open to it, it has been a game changer, especially in relationships. But I had to go through something that was, you know, weird weird, kind of uh, frustrating, creepy, all of that. If you've never been, if you've never been in a relationship with a narcissist, you have no idea. You have no idea, man. Listen, I recently went through the shit. <clears throat> so I went, I've been in relationships with squares, good girls, strippers, drug dealing bitches, <laughs> fucking ghetto bitches, um, foreign bitches. <laughs> like I've never Never, it's not even close, man, what it was like uh, dating a real narcissist. Because, like, look, everybody can be narcissistic, but not everybody is a narcissist, a real narcissist. Listen, like, if you're like, dude, why is he saying it like this? Trust me when I say this, you'll never, you'll never forget it. It'll be a life changing experience. But the sad part is, a lot of people catch it way too late. I caught it because when I was in a relationship, it was just these weird things just kept happening. It was so fucking weird. Everything was weird. Dude, it was so weird. I thought like I was being pranked. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. And um, I feel like they should teach these type of disorders and not even pushing it in like a fuck them and negative light. I know a lot of people do feel that way about narcissists. It's hard not to, but not even... I, I feel like it would be beneficial to the narcissist if we taught this shit in high school. Because I feel like a lot of the narcissists don't know that they're narcissists and a lot of the narcissists get away with being narcissists because we don't know they're narcissists. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I said, man, uh, uh, 
if if I were to hear this whole narcissist this and that before I engage with one, I wouldn't give a fuck either. But I promise you, there's a big community of us. <laughs> there really is, man. Like a lot of people be hitting me up in the DM and shit. They be talking about how they been with somebody who's a narcissist and this and that. And I've been trying to feel like I've been trying to figure out a way in which I could give you guys the game that I got from it because the experience was so crazy. But I don't want to come on here like the regular YouTuber that's just <laughs> narcissistic personality disorder stems from child. I don't want to do that. I don't want to fucking do that. If I do it, I want to give like a real, I want to give y'all game like from my point of view, from the person who was experiencing it when I was experiencing it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like not the not the hindsight. I could definitely give y'all the hindsight, but I want to give like what it felt like because that's what people I feel need because you're it's so easy to miss. It's not like the games, I'm going to be real. The games that a narcissist plays, they truly do fascinate me. They do. Ah, oh, there's so much about it that is so weird. But I guess I'm fascinated by weird shit. Like, <laughs> but um, but yeah, a lot of you that are having issues in your relationship, I wonder. I wonder if it's uh, you know, you you got yourself a little narcissist in there. <laughs> Especially the people that like the people that hit me up. They're like, dude, it never ends. I'm like, yeah, you probably <laughs> you probably got one in there. But I'm like, bro, I can't sit here and like you know, dissect the whole fucking relationship for you. Like, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I do want to do, I do want to do a podcast where I cover it, but fuck, it's so crazy, man. I'd have to sit down and actually like script this thing out on how it kind of unfolded, but I just feel like it would be, it would be educational for people out there because like I said I get these messages and I'm like dude a lot of this shit sounds like these games and before I knew that these games even existed I missed it you know like I <clears throat> and if I can get got anybody can get got so so yeah anyway let's get to our girl let's get to our girl man <clears throat> one second let me brush up on this right quick. Yeah, so this actually happened two this happened two nights ago. All right. <clears throat> I just put my notes. We had a conversation. I'm gonna sum up what we what we were talking about, and then we're just gonna talk about it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's always something going on outside. At all times. Yeah, dude, last night, last night there was a, a, a Dominican couple uh, just having a normal conversation, but it sounded like they were arguing for their life, <laughs> which is completely normal. Yo, listen, my, my apartment is right off of Ninth Avenue, so a lot of people cross this street to get to 8th Avenue and for whatever reason well you know how when like so all the bars are on 9th Avenue so everybody's most likely leaving a bar lounge rooftop something like that right <laughs> and you know that like when you're leaving and you're walking home back to your hotel back to your apartment whatever and you have to have that stop talk with your girl before you get into that closed space you feel me <laughs> They 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 tend to do that right outside of my apartment, man. I cannot tell you how many people uh, on a Saturday you could walk down my street and just see like three or four people stopped having one of them conversations. Like I told you, dude. Nah, it's it actually is um, perfect for this podcast too because I just be laying in my bed. Like sometimes, man. Listen, sometimes real life is better than any entertainment ever. I'll be running through the Netflix right, and a fucking couple will do their little stop talk <laughs> right in front of my apartment. I'll have the like window cracked. They can't see in. Um, and I'll just fucking turn off the TV, just lay back and just let them <laughs> do what they do, man. That shit is far more entertaining, far more, yo. And I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. And it's the same shit every time. Every dude is saying the same shit. You know what I'm saying, I told you. <laughs> How many times am I going to have to tell you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what one of my favorite things to do is though? Because 
like nobody could see in to my windows. I don't know if anybody knows that. Like whenever I show you if on Instagram you follow me and I show you outside, nobody could see me, right? <laughs> so sometimes like my favorite thing to do, and I have two windows. I have one that's in the uh, living room, one that's in my room, right? So when they're cracked, it's hard to even see that they're cracked, the window. I'll just like yell out like a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a troll, man. This is like if I'm just bored <laughs> and I just want to spice something up. Dude, like somebody would be having like a serious conversation. It'll be dark as fuck. It'll be like two in the morning, man. And I'll just put my mouth right next to the fucking crack of the window, right? I'll be like, shut your bitch ass up. Dude, I swear to God, bro. <laughs> I just get, it gets them every time, bro. It gets them every time. Sometimes they be jolting and shit like that. <laughs> nah, like, where are you, bro? And it is looking up to like this blank fucking building and shit, bro. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. Or sometimes I'll be like, she's right. <laughs> I'll be doing some dumb ass shit. Hey, nah, what's <laughs> Dude, nah, yeah. I've had some conversations with people. They don't even know who they're talking to either. But, um, if I've heard the whole conversation, yeah, I'll chime in, man. I'll be like, hey, yo, I ain't going to lie to you. She is right, bro. She is right, bro. You didn't stand up for her when her friend came over to her. <laughs> but, like, but like, it's kind of a cool thing to observe, man, because it lets you know that, for one, you're not alone. But then also, I look at these dudes and I'm like, bro, what'd you expect? Look at how you're dressed, Look at how your body has developed, the shape that you're in, bro. I'm not even talking about like gym-wise, just the literal shape, bro. I don't know how this has worked for you. Like back in the day, like you would have never survived, bro. Like I'm trying to tell you, these dudes are built funny, man. Like, like it caught up to them. I sit down a lot, especially when I'm doing some of the music stuff, but I don't know how this happens so quickly in evolution, man. Like these dudes are shaped different. And here's another thing as a man that bothers the fuck out of me. Hey, by the way, I totally, I totally forgot we got to help our girl out. But uh, this is what bothers the fuck out of me about men in 2024. You guys are not aware of your surroundings, bro. Like, that's crazy. You motherfuckers are so into your phone that you're running into people as you're walking and shit. In New York City? <laughs> Bro, that's crazy. I I wish I was on like criminal type. I, I want to rob you. I want to do something to you, bro, because you need to learn your lesson of why you shouldn't do this, bro. Like, I swear to God, so many dudes, especially like, <clears throat> here's the thing. If I'm, if I'm with a female, I automatically feel like that responsibility of a protector type shit. That has nothing to do with the bitch. My mother instilled that into me. You know, like when I'm walking with my sisters and shit like that, boy, you better pay attention. Like I have that instilled in me, you know, because I because because I know no one's going to protect me. You know what I'm saying? So, Lord forbid, uh, you know, you just got to be aware of your surroundings, bro. You should do it with or without the girl. And I am I do it. I'm not one of these people you're going to see on my fucking phone. I'm not. Not while I'm in transition. Not while I'm like going from one place in route. You know what I'm saying? It could wait. I mean, if it's ringing, yeah, but you motherfuckers is lost. You're lost. How you lost, bro? <laughs> lost? <laughs> it's crazy, man. They really are, though, man. They'll bump right into you, not even say nothing. You motherfuckers won't even say nothing, man. That's not, Where's the real men at? I'm saying all this to say these are the people that are outside of my apartment. Last night was a different flavor i got the dominicans last night which is a special night you know but usually i get like these fucking dorky ass square ass relationships and those are those are fun too because i'm like oh so that's how they live <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i'm like oh okay i always wondered how these arguments would go <laughs> but listen all females are the same man they're all saying the same shit nothing <laughs> nothing man <laughs> I feel like females being like survival mode, trying to like avoid that accountability and shit like that. That's probably why Jesus didn't come back. You know what I'm saying? All them conspiracy theories about the solar eclipse and Jesus returning, he probably didn't come back because he can't find a way to hold these hoes accountable, man. It's probably like, damn. <laughs> they're dodging the, they're dodging the sins and the accountability for him and shit like that, man. Nah, real, real shit. We're all going through the same battle with that. 
They're doing everything. I've heard females, though, you know that, uh, you know you got a good one. Listen, you know you got a good one. When uh, she starts out with the big fucking, like, I'm not going to be accountable. And she, you know, she's just not thinking logically. And she's making no sense. And then you start to insert the logic. And then she's still trying to hold up the fight. And then you finally get that, nah, you know what? You're right. After your fucking... 15 minutes out of breath sweating and shit like that dude i've had people lose their shit outside of my window bro real shit i've I've heard like oh my god and i know exactly what that's from i'm like oh yeah one of them one of them bro and there's nothing like the drunk stop and talk too like that's that's just oh my god that's worth the the raising rent right there I swear to God, it's golden. It is golden. Why does my hat never cooperate? Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry for this episode. All right, let's 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 help our girl out, man. So listen, our girl was in a wedding, right? Let me paint the picture for you. Uh, our girl was in a wedding, and she's in the wedding with her man. So they're both a part of the wedding. So I'm guessing it's like a cousin or somebody that they both know. They've been together for a while. It was like seven years. Um. So there were rehearsals that obviously the bridesmen, uh, the bridesmen, the bridesmen, no, the bridesmaids and the groomsmen, dude, uh, they had to go to these rehearsals, right? So something happened with the girls in these rehearsals. The girl, you know how you have to like chip in like certain <clears throat> money or something like that or get like outfits or something there was something to do between the girls where there was like a money issue or something like that something or maybe like coming late or rescheduling something and then money had to be changed and the money wasn't paid back something like that okay between the females so there's a group of females and there's one female that wants to discuss some behavior about another female so the wedding had already taken place and they're at the reception and you know how there's like separations of the family and the different tables or whatever well they're at the wedding table right and um the girl and she and she messaged me and she was like let me know like let me just know your honest opinion because they both felt that they had you know they were in the right of course but uh the girl at the reception so they're dancing the whole the whole like toasts and everything are done the dj's playing the music and the party is going but they're still sitting at the table the girl decides that she's going to <clears throat> bring up the issue about the other girl and as she's doing that i could only assume that the energy was starting to kind of change in the room and people were starting to notice that there was just maybe a little bit of some tension or something like that. And the boyfriend told the girlfriend, hey, yo, calm down or be cool, something like that, right? She turns over to him and tells him, like, babe, please stop, not now. Or like, you don't know what's going on. But something of that, right? I'm trying to be fair. Um... And she continues to flame on to the issue with the girl. Okay, so now they get back to the hotel and the dude flames on her and is like, you embarrassed me uh, in front of everybody. Like when I tell you to chill, like you need to chill. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like all that. Like she said that he was definitely like pissed the fuck off. Like he lost his shit behind this. Um, and she said she was surprised. She was like, I was so surprised because I lost my shit behind this. Like he embarrassed me. Like when I was talking to the girl, her side was he should have just let her get it off and then talk to her later and be like, <laughs> babe. Should have done that at the table or so. I don't I don't know what she wants, but that's that's what she was saying is is he should have talked to her in private. And um that's where the the whole thing is, is that she was like, nah, like you embarrass me. I you and 
her her one of her hangups was he didn't even know the issue. That's what that's what she said. He didn't even know the issue. So he didn't even know what was going on. He didn't know what I was even going to say. So here's here's my opinion because it's it's wanted and needed. Um if you consider your man to be a leader, you're dead wrong. <laughs> dead wrong. And um, the whole little argument of like, he didn't even know what I was talking about or what. He doesn't need to know. He already seen everything he needs to know. And that's you bringing up some bullshit at the wrong time. Like this night isn't about you. Somebody got married and you're going to bring this shit up now. Nah, hundred percent. You're out of pocket. And he's on and he's on point. Yeah. Yeah. He's on point, you know, but uh, I mean, as far as. Man, I don't know how aggressive he was in the hotel, so I don't know what he's doing with that. But I mean, I can imagine like that drunk check hit different. You know what I'm saying? Like when you got to check your girl and you drunk, it's always going to go up a few notches. <laughs> but um, but no, he handled it pretty much how every man should handle it. If we see our girl going in the direction she shouldn't go, we're not going to wait. You can't dictate how we lead, bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, you either going, we either the leader or not. Like, what type of fucking, like, we got to ask permission or there's only certain things you fucking listen to? Like, what are you talking about? Nah, it's either he is or he ain't. And if he ain't, get rid of him. Keeping these dudes, why are y'all keeping these dudes around that you're not submitting to? It's just pointless. It's just a waste of fucking time. You're just waiting for something bad to happen. It's either play your role and shut the fuck up or, um, you know, abort the whole mission. Yeah, it just baffles me, man, that people get with people they don't even respect and then stay with them. There's nothing more miserable than that. <laughs> just staying with somebody you're just miserable with. You know, and then, yeah. Why, life is too fucking short. Fit. Now, listen, women are hearing that and they're probably like, yeah, I'm going to eject. But, um... <clears throat> get rid of the dude, whatever it is. Nah, you got to do some soul searching. You got to figure out if you need to be accountable for whatever your bullshit is. But you know, after that, if it's just, yo, we just don't got it for one another no more. This shit's dead. I don't respect. Because look, once respect is lost, it is hard to get it back. But women, <sighs> women play, this is why I said y'all got to start reading up on the whole narcissistic traits and shit. This is why I tell men that the, the ultimate power is your presence. A female does, believe it or not, man, a female does appreciate a real man's presence. Like we bring a certain feeling of security, safety. And if you, you know, you've got other like things that contribute, you could be funny. Um, you could be a good leader so they don't have to fry their brain in every decision. I feel like, um, yeah, yeah, but if you're sitting there just arguing, going crazy back and forth, I'm not saying that I've never been in those. I have. We all have, bro. Like like I said, nobody's bulletproof when it comes to these bitches. Um that's why those uh those podcasts can be so cringe. You know what I'm saying? Y'all ever seen them? Like the uh I've been watching them more and more lately. The whatever podcast and the fresh and fit podcast. Listen, I'm gonna give y'all my real opinion on this because I've been tweaking on them for like the last maybe two weeks, right? Before that, didn't really know too much about these guys. They come off like the fucking losers who got um a lot of the shit they say is on point, but they have this like bitterness towards them that I just can't get past. Like, you motherfuckers, <laughs> y'all, yeah, y'all got fucked on or something like that. Something crazy happened. I know they didn't. The girls just don't respect y'all. But here's the thing. Like, dude, I don't really, we don't really respect y'all though. Like that energy that you're kicking off, there's no way around it, bro. There's no way around it. It is feminine, bro. It is. Because I guarantee somebody feminine hurts you. It's just coming off like that, man. Like, especially there's a dude that they like, fucking A. I, I don't know enough, but there's like a white dude on the Fresh and Fit that they lit. Or, nah, he's on both of them. He's a fucking dork. Like, a lot of them dudes are just fucking dorks, man. Like, some of the things that they say are on point, but coming from them, I don't blame these bitches for being like, no. <laughs> no, because they should be, man. They should be just because y'all got y'all. Like, they're hell. They're, they're like some of these dudes sound like they don't even like bitches. Like I'm, I'm just gonna be real with you. Like, uh, 
Dude, a girl asked, a girl asked, uh, I don't know who's fresh and who's fit. I don't know who's, I don't know which one is which. But, um, hold on one second. But there was like an interview where he was with a girl, right? And she was like, uh, talk, she was trying to prove a point about like her worth or something like that. Like what a woman can do. And she was like, yo, like when you have a rough day, like, who do you want to see your woman or your boys? He was like, my boys. I was like, she's like, your boys are the ones you go to to make your day better. And he was like, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. A woman's only good for sex or something like that. And I'm like, N- dude, <laughs> yeah, you guys have to speak for yourself on that one, bro. I'm going home to my bitch. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. If I have a rough night, I'm going home to my bitch, bro. I'm saying it right now. Y'all can go kick it with the bros. I'm going to be with my bitch. <laughs> All right. Real, real shit. Like, I don't know where that came from. I don't know where that philosophy stemmed from, but that is definitely not for all males. I don't even want to hear this shit. That is, that's not alpha male philosophy, bro. I've never heard that one. You know what I'm saying? If I have a rough day, I'm going home to my bitch. And if I don't want to go home to my bitch, I got the wrong bitch. TWB exists, y'all. The wrong bitch. I, if I don't want to go home to her and she can't make my day better and I'm going home to the bros, no. No, bro. I need to fix some shit. I need to do something, bro. Like, what the fuck is that? Like I said, I think they just take the shit too far. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's this, there's this, uh, like, they're jaded. You know what I'm saying like I'm listen don't get don't get it fucked up I like what they're doing as far as like empowering men because I do think a lot of men are bitch but, <laughs> but I just can't get past like especially the dude who whoever which one whichever one got the uh, got the prostitute pregnant that's what you get bro that's what you get. We knew you was, we knew you was like that, bro. Come on. You can look at him and be like, bro, you definitely had 20 books in your backpack in high school. 100%, bro. 100%. He had the big backpack in high school. Yeah. The one where you could just push and he falls over with it. No control, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got the bitch pregnant and then he's all on the phone he's like you need to abort that shit it's like bro a lot of these i man i hate to do this because it discredits the it discredits the guys but a lot of these dudes is frauds man you can see it you can see it like that like in their energy you see how you see how tense they are with their shit or like like how they can't wait to rebuttal and shit they're all like okay uh, like that that somebody fucking hurt you bro that's a fact that's a fact you're not out here having your way bro you're not you have nothing nice to say bro and i'm not even like i'm i'm on your side it's just you're not you should not be the face of this movement 100 percent. because you're pushing it to a, like a point where it sounds gay like you gotten so masculine over there that you done turned gay <laughs> <laughs> pretty soon because they let's be real that's where he's headed with all that shit when she said who would you rather go home to bruh and this motherfucker said his boys that shit it's it's only a matter of time bro it's only a matter of time <laughs> 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 like yo, who, what would you rather do? Eat a bitch out of suck some dick. Suck some dick. <laughs> hey, she should have just threw that in there real quick. It's gonna come out like that. I guarantee it. I guarantee. Yo, slip slip some funny shit in there like that. I guarantee you, some shit's gonna come out sooner or later. It's coming out because he's so he's he's too hateful. He's too fucking hateful, yo. I'm trying to. <sighs> Man, hold on. Let me let me see. Is it is it t- nah? See these dudes. It, these dudes are fucking self destructing over here. I wanna I wanna give you guys the the here it is. Very very attractive. I tell you junk she is. People get laughed into bed all the time. Okay, so listen. It's called Stand Out TV. Stand Out TV. Uh, with it's called Battle of the Sexes. Okay, Myron's his name. I thought their name was Fresh and Fit. You're not going to sit and cry every day, though, are you? You can cry if you're upset. Of course you can. Hold on. Emotionally invaded. You're just... <laughs> Hold on a second, bro. Everything you've heard you today. You think women have... <laughs> look, 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 look. I'm not going to bore you guys. I'm not going to bore you guys, but... um. 
<laughs> Hold on a second, bro. Is it is it here? Fuckers weren't there when this bitch lied and said that I got a pregnant when I fucking did it. And then you dumbasses, three years later, believe some bitch that makes the same fucking allegations again. You fucking idiots. All right, what's going on? Hey, yo. <laughs> yo. Nah, bro. What happened to like this? What is it called? Stoicism or something like that, bro? What happened to that? What was that, bro? There ain't no way, bro. Nah. Um. Oh shit, man. Damn. Did we help our girl out or not? Did we? Uh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see? this podcast is trash. <laughs> um. Oh man. <clears throat> Yeah, baby girl, I'm sorry. You picked the wrong time and place and your man. You got a good one. You got a good one. That's that's crazy how girls be having like dudes that really be like doing their shit and they still think they got some dude that's what did you expect me to say? And what and like let's just say where would you feel like you were right at? That's yeah. <laughs> These women today are crazy. Uh yeah, you wanted him to let you get your shit off. And then he had to sneak around and like wait to go in the back room and whisper it in your ear. Like that's, that's so unrealistic, baby girl. I'm not even going to keep joking about it. That's just, that that's just, you're asking a little too much, you know? Um, and here's the thing, people at that table, if he, if he picked up on it, people most likely picked up on it as well. And he probably did you a favor. Actually, he didn't do you a favor. You didn't do yourself a favor. Because if you would have clipped it, then people probably would have been like, yeah, nobody likes that girl who can't be checked. Nobody. Even the females don't like her. Females know when other females are going crazy and need need a good check. Like females are like, damn, I wish this bitch had a dude. That's why, that's why I feel like a lot of females don't fuck with certain dudes because they've watched females <clears throat> run over them and they wish that dude would have been like, please check this bitch. You know what I'm saying? Baby girl, that was probably happening. Yeah, and he did the right thing. He caught it and was like, hey, yo, calm down. This ain't the right time. This ain't the right place. Um, yeah, and that's 100% normal. The reason why he flashed is because men will flash when they don't get respect. Men do it on other men all, all the time. Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing new there. So, yeah, you got a good one. Give him a back massage or something like that. Do something for him. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> It'll be another two months before we get a a girl to give, ask for any kind of advice or whatever it is. But anyway, man, what are we talking about? Uh, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. Hey, back to the espresso machine, man. I noticed like, because I was saying that I was, <laughs> we're going to end it on a high note here. Um. So I've been trying to lose this weight, right? I've been trying to like drop like 15 pounds or something like that, right? And um, I've been experimenting with the espresso machine and I found out how to do like lattes the right way and all this shit like that. I'm I'm getting old, y'all. I'm getting old. <laughs> and they have like half and half and all these creamers and stuff like that. And there was these like... I did it the proper way. Yo, listen, like my favorite coffee right now is Kona Coffee from Hawaii. They have this brand called Volcanica. It's expensive, but that shit is so fucking good. Anyway, I've been making these lattes because they are so fucking good. And I figured out they had like 600 calories in them. I'm like, damn. So I stopped doing those and now I'm doing like the almond milk lattes and it's just depressing. It's depressing, man. Everything in moderation, baby. All right, we're not doing this. We're not going to. Just talk about nothing here. That's pretty much it. I appreciate everybody. Like I said, everybody that's been hitting me up and they've been asking for this episode or that episode, I'm going to do a, a Q&A episode where I just get everybody up to speed. Because a lot of these questions are people, things that people want to know, um, I feel like they're not topic, they're not things I can make a topic for a whole video, but I think it'll be fun just to run through it. And um, have an episode where I catch up on all the messages that I've been getting. And as far as the people who are in relationships, like I said, I'm still going to think about how I could potentially kick out an episode where I kind of walk you guys through one of my most toxic uh, relationships. And 
I really do feel like that would help because I have scoured the internet for it. And I always want to bring something different. And I just feel like, I feel like I could do it, but I don't know. Anyway, I appreciate everybody and I apologize for the time off and I'm still trying to figure things out over here, but you know, we'll get it together. All right. Love you all. Stay savage.